Greetings! Welcome to Saint of the Week, the show where we choose one saint's feast day from this week and discuss their life and their impact on the church. The saint for this week is Saint Benedict of Nursia, whose feast day is July 11th, this Wednesday. Benedict was born alongside his twin sister Scholastica on March 2nd, 480 in Nursia, Italy. His parents were noble and he was educated in Rome, but he became disgusted by the extravagant and immoral life there, and so he left home around the year 500 taking his old nurse with him as a servant. They settled in Enfide, which is modern-day Aphile. Here in Enfide, Benedict worked his first miracle when he restored a broken wheat scepter to perfect condition. He began to gain notoriety because of this, but Benedict wanted no part of it. And so he left for the region of Subiaco. Here he met a monk, Romanus, who befriended him and gave him the habit. Romanus advised Benedict to become a hermit, and so Benedict lived in solitude in a cave outside of town. For three years, Benedict had almost no contact with other people, except for Romanus, who would visit him and bring him food. However, the people he did encounter liked and admired him greatly, and once again, word began to spread of Benedict's deep holiness. So much so that a group of monks who had just lost their abbot asked if he would accept the role. Benedict initially refused, since he knew his own way of life was very different from theirs, but the monks persisted, so he finally agreed. As Benedict had predicted, the monks did not accept his strict, austere way of life. They disliked it so much that they tried to poison him. They put poison in his drink, but when Benedict prayed over and blessed the cup, it shattered. After this, Benedict left the monastery and went back to his cave. There, he was, there was a priest named Florentius who was jealous of Benedict, and who also tried to poison him, this time with a loaf of bread. But God was attentive to Benedict's prayers, and a raven flew in, taking the poison loaf away. Despite his best attempts to remain in solitude, Benedict continued to attract followers, but these truly desired to live as he did. As a result, he founded 12 monasteries in the vicinity of Subiaco, and in 530, in order to avoid people like Florentius, he left the region altogether. In the same year, he founded the great Benedictine monastery Monte Cassino, located between Rome and Naples. The rule of life that Benedict composed for his monks was a simple one, Ora et Labora, uh, which is Latin for prayer and work, as well as having an emphasis on humility, obedience, and charity. The monks would spend eight hours praying, eight hours sleeping, and eight hours doing either manual labor, studies, or works of charity. It was this rule that has become the basis of Western monasticism unto this day, almost 1500 years after it was written. Monte Cassino became a cultural landmark, serving as both a refuge for the poor and a center of intellect and learning. Benedict's fame only continued to spread, but he always remained the same humble, simple man. He died of a fever on March 21st, 543, not long after the death of his sister, Scholastica, and the two are buried side by side. He is the patron saint of civil engineers, coppersmiths, dying people, erysipelas, Europe, farmers, fever, gallstones, kidney disease, Nursia, Italy, members of religious orders, students, spelunkers, and he is invoked against poison and witchcraft. Benedict was a sympathetic, kind, and gentle man, whose quiet holiness and simple way of life truly changed the world. He was known to be a great worker of miracles, which was born out of his strong prayer life and immense devotion to God. The father of Western monasticism, his legacy has impacted thousands and will continue to do so for years to come. St. Benedict of Nursia, pray for us. Our honorable mentions for this week are St. Procopius of Scythopolis, St. Mary Hermina Griveau, St. Anthony Pachersky, St. Veronica, Blessed Mariano de Jesus Yusei Hoyos, and St. Ulrich. And of course, there are thousands of other saints who undoubtedly have their feast days this week, but there are so many of them that there is no way we could list them all here. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Saint of the Week. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Peace be to you.